I thought that I put something red on, like when you are drawing, your first impulse to do mm. something red on a sheet of paper, a little bit of red paint, and then you see what follows. It's really, people notice that there is a lot of red spots or red squares, squares. in my painting. And I don't know why, uh, maybe because I started painting not with a brush, but with a palette knife. Mm. When I use this palette knife, you use it flat on the paper, okay. and you can get squares or rectangles. Mm -hmm. they, you don't get lines like with a brush. Mm -hmm. And I think I do like in art or in my work, the color red. Mm -hmm. It gives me a uh, energy, mm -hmm. gives me an impulse. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't always start with that, but sometimes when I am in a painting and I don't know where to go, very often I put a little red square or little red, and the whole thing comes to life. Comes to life. It brings the whole painting into energy. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I say, now that's enough. There are other colors also <laughs> <laughs> which are... Uh, all colors are beautiful. Colors need each other. Mm -hmm. My father was from Syria. My mother being a Greek from Turkey, from Smyrna. Mm -hmm. uh, a common language with my father was Turkish. I see. To me, she spoke Greek, mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. I started art in California. I never went to art school. But my mind was already formed because I was teaching a philosophy of art. Mm -hmm. So you started to paint there, and one of your colleagues, colleagues yeah, she asked you, uh, how can you teach philosophy or uh, painting yeah. without painting? That's it. She was the head of the art department. Mm -hmm. Her name was Anne O'Hendon. And she said, you are the new uh, professor I said, yes, and, uh, and she said, are you painting? I said, no. She said, how can you teach about art and not do any art? Mm -hmm. And I said, my mother said I was clumsy. And she said, you believed her? <laughs> and you know, the timing of that conversation, it, f it made me free. I suddenly could use my hand. Mm -hmm. And she said, come to the department. And she gave me, uh, in the beginning, little crayons. So I used them already flat, mm -hmm. instead of using them as a brush. Mm -hmm. this, this idea of working flat, of course, influences your image, what yeah. you do. We should remember how important the material you use influences what you do. And how the, you do it. The, they collaborate with yes. you. Even the type of paper. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful to be sensitive, not only to the, what you are doing, but what the material makes you do. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. When I start something, I get tense and I want to finish. So a small canvas I can finish in one sitting. Mm -hmm. It comes from me writing poetry. Yeah. Poetry is small mm -hmm. and dense. Mm -hmm. And my canvases are like small that. And dense. I never put one color on top, on top of another. Mm -hmm. They are very clear. I think I paint like I write poetry, really. Yeah. I wait until I know what I will do, and once it's done, I let it go. They are really visual poems. So instead of adding on top the color, I you add, add next to sides, each other. Which is very uh, similar to poetry, because you add one word exactly, next to the exactly. other. Exactly. Yes. And also, they are related, mm -hmm. they are dense, mm -hmm. and they don't say many things. They say, usually, a poem 
doesn't say 50 ideas, just makes it just point. One, one idea. One feeling yes. or idea. Yes, very nice. You have been taking classes in Paris with Gaston Bachelard. He wrote The Poesy of Space, where he describes that there's a whole universe in a nutshell. It reminded me very much on your paintings because they are in a small format, but the way you like cut it with the knife and you construct Yes. The whole painting. They are construction. When I put a color, that color has the intensity of the color, but it has a shape. Mm -hmm. It has to have a mm -hmm. shape. You cannot avoid that. Mm -hmm. So this conditions the next move. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the next move will be. My eye looks at the tube, and suddenly I pick up a blue. Mm -hmm. When I put another surface of blue, mm -hmm. small or big, I don't know. It creates a new entity mm -hmm. with which I deal for the third. Mm -hmm. And the hardest moments are before the end. Uh -huh. What, because the last movement should put the whole thing together. It's constantly creating a new balance mm -hmm. of color and weight. The weight of the color is not only its own color, it's also its surface. Mm -hmm. Like a small red square doesn't weigh mm -hmm. as much as a big, big red square or bigger. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Islamic mystics mm -hmm. like Ibn Arabi said, the whole universe is in every point. Voila. For every point, is the image of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the medieval Europeans call them microcosm, microcosm and macrocosm, mm -hmm. which means the little universe reflects the peak. So the universe is in every drop of water. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thought, no? And yeah. it's very true in a way. Very true. I think my work basically abstracted landscapes. It is a great sense of California nature because American nature really was a big discovery. And it's everywhere. Uh, I, I was north of San Francisco, which means I was by the ocean all the time, by the bay, by that mountain. Wherever I would go, there would be Yosemite Valley. Mm. I discovered a landscape on a large scale. So actually, even if there are geometrical forms like squares and pyramids and so on, it's not about geometry, but it's about... No, it's never on geometry. The feeling of California nature is in me. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's, it's not the image of nature, it's the feeling of nature. Mm -hmm. It's a bit different. Even the mountain is geometric. Geometry is in the mind, yeah. it's not in nature. Yeah. I did a show uh, w together with a Jap Japanese curator and we called it logical emotion. Yeah. So I think it's really between these two, there's a certain logic to it. Um, a mountain has a pyramidal form, but it's actually what you are more interested in is in the emotion of yeah. this mountain. Yeah. So, and uh, I think this is uh, very You know, we speak of logic we speak of emotion. We have two words. Yeah. But because we have two words, we think we have two things. Mm -hmm. But these two things are not separated. There yeah. is yeah. no pure logic and pure feeling. That's not. You cannot separate your logic from your feeling. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are more aware of your feeling, mm -hmm. or you are more aware of your logic. But there is feeling in logic and logic in feeling. Voilà. You know, the house constructive is something they always say it's apolitical. And I don't believe in art being apolitical. I mean, no. For me, even yes. my geometric or lyrical paintings yes. are political. In the sense, my writing is very political because words are social. And I suffer from what goes on in the world. But then I also love life and the world. So my painting, say, 
even if things are bad, we have to stay happy. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my painting. So that's Very political. Nice. You see, that victory is resistance is to be happy. So how can I be happy? So I am happy when I paint. <laughs> That's very good. One has to find a way of happiness, yeah. despite everything. And I have my own, I found. <laughs>